वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी विल टॉक अबाउट नॉन लीनियर ऑप एम सर्किट और नॉन लीनियर एप्लीकेशन ऑफ ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर टिल नाउ वी हैव गॉन थ्रू द लीनियर एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द ऑप एम जस्ट लाइक वी हैव गॉन थ्रू द इन्वर्डिंग एम्पलीफायर नॉन इन्वर्डिंग एम्पलीफायर और समिंग एम्पलीफायर डिफरेंस एम्पलीफायर दैट वी हैव अंडरस्टूड नाउ इट्स अ टाइम टू डिस्कस अबाउट द नॉन लीनियर ऑप एम सर्किट नाउ वॉट एक्जैक्टली नॉन लीनियर ऑप एम सर्किट इज बिसाइड्स द ऑब्वियस एम्पलीफिकेशन applications and op amp can also be used for the number of other applications and circuit in this uh, lecture or in this tutorial we will learn about very frequently used non linear op amp circuit okay what do you mean by non linear in the non linear op amp circuit the input output characteristics are non linear that are not in straight line so let's understand that operational amplifiers along with the linear circuit are also vastly used to configure non linear circuit the circuit whose output exhibits non linear change with respect to the change in the input these circuits are commonly known as switching circuits or those output switches between for those the output switches between positive and negative saturation voltage level if you do remember smith trigger is also one of the non linear circuit most popularly used circuit configurations are zero crossing detector they are also called zcds smith trigger a stable and mono stable multi vibrator okay so in this lecture we will talk about a stable multi vibrator multi vibrator using op amp now we have already studied a stable multi vibrator using we have already studied a stable multi vibrator using triple five timer ic in the same way a stable means which is not having a any stable state and it is also called free running multi vibrator so we will talk about that in this particular lecture The circuit diagram of the stable multi vibrator using op amp is shown in the figure below. The circuit is a Smith trigger once again configuration, which has feedback connection and that includes input capacitor at the inverting input terminal. The only difference which you can observe, see here, feedback is given to the positive input of the op amp, and as I already told you, whenever the feedback is given to the positive terminal, it is a stable. It is, it is not stable. It is not having any stable state, and if we are talking about the negative feedback then it will definitely give the feedback uh, stable state now in this case what is going to happen this capacitor is connected to the inverting input of this op amp and this r2 and r3 are connected like this okay now the reference voltage which is given at the non inverting input terminal of the op amp is r3 divided by r2 plus r3 and see you can see a part of it is also fed back this r1 resistor is used to charge the capacitor to the output voltage so we'll try to understand that in the working stage okay when a, a stable multi vibrator circuit output is at its positive saturation level okay when it is at its positive saturation level the current flows through the feedback resistor r1 so let's assume that initially the op amp is positively saturated if it is positively saturated we assume that the voltage here is v sat if this is the v saturation voltage the capacitor will get charged to the positive saturation through this resistor r1 the circuit next we will try to understand what exactly next is this charge of the capacitor with the top plate positive the capacitor get charged until the voltage reaches to the upper trigger voltage of the smith trigger at this point the output of the circuit switches to its negative saturation voltage okay so in this case what will happen see let's say uh, it is at the positive saturation and then it is switches to the negative saturation let's say op amp characteristics is something like this okay, positive saturation negative saturation so because of this positive saturation value the capacitor i will take the black color one the capacitor will charge to the positive saturation value and as long as your uh, output does not changes to the negative saturation then it will discharge to the negative saturation value then once again it will charge to the positive saturation then discharge to the negative saturation and this process is going to repeat let's understand this for the more okay at this point the output of the circuit switches to the negative saturation level immediately no current flows into the capacitor now thus the capacitor charge discharging the discharging of the capacitor continues till the capacitor voltage reaches to the lower trigger value or the smith trigger the voltage switches to the positive saturation level and the cycle repeats as i already discussed in this case it can be noted that the circuit is a square wave generator whose output swings between the op amp positive and negative saturation voltage level the frequency of the output square wave depends on the capacitance c and the feedback resistor r1 right the frequency of the output depends on the r1 and c the output and the capacitor voltage waveforms of a stable multi vibrator are shown in the figure below you can see this waveform 
here. So when the output is at the positive saturation, the capacitor will charge from its lower saturation value, lower threshold value to the higher threshold value till it is on. When it switches, when both of them will become equal, there is upper threshold value that is VUT and this is VLT which is decided by the R2 and R3. Then capacitor get discharged, once again capacitor get charged, capacitor get discharged, the process will be repeated. So this is about the a stable multi vibrator. Now, in the third case, the same circuit configuration can be used to generate square waves of adjustable frequency over range by including potentiometer in series with R2 and R3. By adjusting the resistance value of the potentiometer, the frequency of the output square wave can be varied. That is how we can vary the output voltage by just simply selecting the values of R2 and R3. This R2 and R3, I will once again take you back to the circuit. This R2 and R3 circuits will decide the upper threshold value ut value and lower threshold value lt value this int and rt value of ut and lt value are decided by r2 and r3 and charging and discharging of the capacitor is decided by this r1 resistor this is about a stable multi vibrator the waveform also we have gone through next circuit that we will see is the relaxation oscillator what do you mean by relaxation oscillator see the name itself indicate it is going to oscillate between certain values how it is going to oscillate that let's try and understand a relaxation oscillator is basically a non-linear oscillator that has an ability to generate non-sinusoidal periodic waveform at its output such as triangular wave, square wave etc. These are also known as non-sinusoidal waveform generator. This relaxation oscillator is also known as non-sinusoidal waveform generator. A relaxation oscillator operates in such a way that it generates oscillations by charging of the capacitor and quickly discharging it after attaining the predetermined threshold voltage. Okay. Let's understand it by simply looking at this circuit. Let's assume that initially there is a capacitor. When the battery voltage is applied or the supply voltage is applied, it will charge the capacitor to its fullest. When it is charging the capacitor, the bulb is off. Bulb is off. When capacitor is fully charged, then capacitor wants to find a discharging path and now capacitor discharges through bulb and then bulb will be on. So in the positive half cycle or in initially the capacitor will be charged to its fullest and when it charges, tries to discharge it will be discharged through the bulb and bulb will be on and off depending on the capacitor voltage. So the figure below will help you to understand the conceptual ideas of the relaxation oscillator that we will try to understand. Here we can see a capacitor is placed that stores the energy supplied by the external source in one phase and releases that particular energy in another phase. Basically at the time charging of the capacitor, the bulb connected to the circuit does not illuminate it. But at the time of discharging of the capacitor, bulb start flashing for the time period determined by the RC time constant. This operating principle is adopted by relaxation oscillator. Okay, it is adopted by relaxation oscillator. Now let's look at op-amp as a relaxation oscillator. Look at this particular diagram. Okay, in this particular diagram, uh, op-amp is connected. Look at this circuit. R1 and R2 will decide upper threshold and lower threshold values. Along with that, this resistance and this capacitor will decide charging time and discharging time of the capacitor. These zener diodes are used to select output voltage. So the initially the output voltage can be across VZ1 or it can be across VZ2, depending on whether the op amp is positive goes to the positive saturation or negative saturation that is uh, op amp output is in the positive saturation then one of the zener diode will turn on when the op amp output is in the negative saturation another zener diode will turn on and across see one zener diode is connected in the forward bias mode another zener diode is connected in the reverse bias mode which will assure okay as you all know when the zener diode is connected in the forward bias it is acting as a normal diode let's say it is in the plus v side then voltage across or output voltage will be minus Vz2. Okay. When the op amp output is in the minus Vz, this op amp will be in the reverse bias mode and this will correspond to minus Vz1. Okay. So that we will try to understand in the next lecture. Till then we will talk about uh, op amp relaxation oscillator using op amp. Till then thank you very much and happy learning.